that there seems to be a bit of a problem. It's a classic 2017 Hondu. It's the Pilot. It's got some injectors that are gone funky on it and a bunch of codes. Uh, do we want to rerun the test? We don't. Uh, it has codes for running rich uh, on bank two. Some misfire codes. It's got all kinds of little issues. Let's turn that key on. What I want to check is the high pressure fuel. Let's see, fuel pressure right here. There we go. So we're at 626 and building. So periodically, I will check this and it will start to lose pressure, um, which is wrong. I mean, this is what it technically should be doing is building fuel pressure. Uh, because it's a closed system and when we shut it off if the system's good and the injectors aren't leaking it builds fuel pressure but i've done this before on this car and it's about every four or five times you shut it off and all of a sudden the pressure will it won't drop like a rock but it drops down pretty steady almost as steady as what it's going up but a little bit quicker at any rate i have made the executive decision as owner ceo of the company to replace the fuel injectors uh, it made me feel good. Hondu had three of them in stock, and by three I mean three full sets. The, how they sell them is a six pack. And they're quite reasonably priced, to be honest with you. Uh, I can buy all six of these uh, GDI injectors straight from Honda. So, genuine Hondu, made in America, uh, for the price of one fuel injector made in China for uh, a Chevrolet. So, that's good. And uh, here's the part number on these little guys. In case you need them, uh, of course, call your Honda dealer to verify. Anyhow, uh, not, you know, trash talking Chevrolet. It's just I found it kind of amazing that I can buy six for the price of one. Anywho, we got to take the intake manifold off here. Doesn't look too horrible. We'll probably leave the throttle body that's over here attached to all of its hoses and coolant lines and stuff like that and just unbolt it from the intake. And then I think it just zippy zap the bolts out of it. And lift that off and then i believe it's all right here i did check service data they didn't have anything anything real particular uh, about this other than uh reinstalling new seals and such but the injectors come with the seals on it so i think we're going to be in good shape but i'll tell you this i've been wrong before folks on lots of occasions so you never know it could turn into a disaster or it could go extremely well and we actually could be right on our diagnosis even. <clears throat> this car has been giving this guy fits for a little bit of time now and it was uh, I think it initially started with him if I remember correctly he would complain of an engine light coming on just periodically you know it would come on on one drive and then he wouldn't see it for a month or so and then it's it's gotten to the point where it's quite persistent so now he wants to fix it and uh, I wish I could have shown you at a moment in which it loses fuel pressure but um, like I say, that's kind of sporadic also. But when it does, it does. There's no doubt about it what's going on. And about the only spot it can lose fuel pressure is through an injector, but it does fail the uh, balance test there. Baby's toasty. Come on, how long are you? Wow. So we're gonna take this off, hopefully without ripping it. And when you check the fuel trim, the fuel trim numbers, I just think right off the chart. I think they're running like 0.86. So it's going to be somewhere around, you know, average 12 to 17% negative. You know, it's trying to cut the fuel back on both banks. There's that, there's those four bolts, O-ring seal. And like I said, I did that so we don't have to mess around with the coolant lines, uh, which would be nice if we can avoid that. We have a connector here. Of course, we already unhooked the booster, the map sensor there. I don't know, I don't know what this is here, I just unhooked. Maybe a purge solenoid perhaps is what it looks like, I think. Um, it does have a hose going to the bottom of it, so we're gonna get a pair of needle nose unhook that looks like we have one for the brake booster and then it looks like on the intake here there's a fresh air side of the uh, PCV system 
of some sort. And then I think it just zippies half these bolts out. So we'll take this hose. This looks like it has something to do with the crankcase ventilation of some sort. So we'll pop that out of there also. Gonna set that to the side. Bad habit, we'll get our stuff off the cowl. And then we have a brake booster hose back here, it looks like. Get that baby to come loose. Leave that sitting there. And then, like I say, there's one way down here I'm gonna have to move you folks. Let's see, I'm giving the classic reach around here. Ugh. If I can get it, it has a little clamp on it. I believe it's the purge valve, is what it looks like. If not, that's what we're calling it. Scoop that to the side. Come on, baby. Get the hose to crack loose on it here. Almost. Yes, there she is, the baby is born. So there's that, now I think we just gotta take the bolts out. And then this must have something to do this thing have EGR, yeah, it must have something to do with EGR here. There's a couple bolts down yonder, so we'll take them out too. Never really know if stuff has EGR anymore. You don't see it much. So everything's hitting that VTEC, yo. And uh, that usually does away with EGR. Because they do it with the VTEC. I think that's it. Is that, is that everybody? Oh yeah, she feels loose. Let's get a magnet. Because we want to grab both of these. Both of these nuts. We don't want to drop them. There's that one. There's four of those. And then it looks like four of these. That's it, baby. Let's set that to the side. And see if we can't just... There's probably stuff we're missing, I'm sure. Um, um, yep, it looks like, looks like the ECM cover here has gots to go. Let me see what holds this thing on. Might have to turn the camera off and just snap it off, but we'll try to avoid that. Like literally this much plastic sticking over this edge. All right, screw it. We're checking service data. Long story short, they don't say anything about removing that cover. However, it does say to fully remove the EGR tube, which I think will give us the opportunity to slide it this way. That's what we're about to find out. Then you ain't got to fiddle with the plastic, perhaps. But it doesn't say anything about it in service data. So we'll take the EGR tube off all the way. Stick our O-rings back in there. We'll set that to the side, and now we will see if this allows us. No, it can't because we're still on these studs, am I right? Yeah, so that, that doesn't benefit. I should have thought about that out loud. What the flip, man? Get wrecked, Honda. Uh, I had to turn the camera off for a minute and do a little bit of, a little bit of out loud cussing. Uh, there is two retainers on the back side that I could kind of see this one. So I reached behind, gave it the classic reach on the pick, clicked it open, pulled it up. Then I could see the other one and I just did the old poke and hope on the back. Uh, anyhow, it'll go on wicked easy. And then we should be able to, uh, we should be able to click this little guy back together. Surprised that's not in service data. Uh, the easiest way to do it would be to loosen the ECM. So that's all clicked back together. So you have your couple couple clicker tabs here on the front and then a couple on the back. And the right way I think would have been to remove the ECM, get it out so you can get behind it. Uh, to get to one of the bolts so you gotta take another bracket off. And it was like too complicated. So I'll spend 45 minutes trying to do it a different way. There's that, there's the intake upper. There's that, we don't wanna lose our O-ring here. And then I believe we need to take 
this little fell off because I think everybody's sitting underneath that that we want to get to. Now that we've overcome that little hurdle, we're going to loosen up all these bolts and nuts. One nut there. Looks like there's four nuts. Two on each end. Oops. That whole stud came out of that one. Not a big deal. Okay, there's all of those. Short little guys here. So you have two, four, five of those and then uh, four knots and then in this case the whole stud that came out which like I say it's not a big deal we'll fix it when we put it in and this should be loose we don't want to drop a bunch of stuff down in the engine so let's we'll do that very gingerly everything's nice and smoking hot before we even fill anything we're gonna get the vacuum and we're gonna give her a little gets rid of some of this stuff and then we'll fiddle because we have to take this little cover off and these this little cover off here and then that way we can get to our fuel rail here and take that off and then replace our injectors not a lot of carbon buildup on this engine I'm surprised usually GDI you pull the intake and it's like son of a mother I <laughs> can't see nothing but this one's not bad Looks like this here clicks on just like so, and it is labeled this way two fuel pumps. You gotta make sure you put it on right. Let's see, then we've got a plastic cover down here. Looks like the 10 mm holding that baby together, so we'll get one of those. Take that out all zippy zap like. Carefully take that off. No, I didn't drop too much dirt down in there. That exposes our high pressure fuel pump and a dead bee. And then we need to re uh, move these two lines. Now this baby probably still has some pressure on it. So put on your squints. All right, so I'm just talking to my sales rep from Napper. Uh, doesn't want to sponsor us. That's okay, I put a uh, little um, cloths there in the port so we don't drop too much stuff. Got out the 19. We're going to give it the crack loose with a rag over it. So I just cracked it loose. I can hear it hissing. So it's hissing and pee-peeing down there. I'll let you see it. You ready? I'm not going to look. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. And then we'll cover it back up. That's how you bleed fuel pressure. Not really, but... And we'll crack the other one loose here. They're going to be drizzling a little while because this thing's pretty hot. Like I said, make sure you got on your squints while you're doing this. We'll crack that loose. Now they're both down here just a hissing. And uh, we'll let those drizzle for a while. I think we're gonna take and pop this little guy off too because we're gonna take these tubes out all the way. It's our best bet. Uh, I don't know. If this has a double donger connector, it probably does. You gotta push it in. Son of a mother, it does. So it's got one a release on the bottom of it also. Which I don't know. <sighs> Dang it all the heck. There we go. Yeah, baby. So there's that connector. Stick that rubber back over it. I like so, it tells you to push. Of course, that's on the bottom where you can't see it. And then we have a bolt right here, and then there's another bolt down here. We got the 10 millimeter variety, the 12, and then we've got another 19 up here. You guys can't see crap. I'd explain it all to you again, but you're gonna see it here shortly. So we're gonna crack that loose. Interestingly enough, uh, these fuel transfer tubes, usually on the domestic lines, 
they tell you to replace them. Like anytime you look at it, touch it, walk by it, start the car, you know, always needs to replace them. But on the Hondu, I did not see it in service data. Therefore, we're not going to replace it. I think they, uh, you know, because it's like a male and female half, it's like a, it's like a brake line fitting. And I think they deform, or I guess potentially that is a problem. I think what they're trying to do is not have high pressure fuel leaks. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? But Honda, Honda, they don't care. They're like, whatever. Reuse it. Because they looked at all the guys doing the domestic stuff and said, hey, you know what? They're all reusing them. Nobody replaces them. So there is that little monstrosity. We'll have to get that cleaned off a little bit because it's got some dirt and junk on it. We don't want dirt and junk down in our injectors. So I'm going to set this to the side very gingerly, wipe them off. We don't want to get schmoo in there. All right. Is anybody still with me at this point? Where can we set this? Right there. Looks good. Set those bolts with that. And now we will do this. We don't want to drop that. There's those ones. Oh, good thing we had stuff in the hole. All right, now we have the injectors that are still plugged in. And we also have a, a high pressure fuel sensor down here that is still plugged in. What I'm thinking, I'm thinking if we can get the injectors unplugged, that would be great. Looks like there's a release tab there. Boom, there's one. There's two. See if we can hit the switch on that one. Uh, let me get something else here. Need your classic pick. I'll hold up on the wire, hit the release. Boom, there's that one. So there's three of those. Uh, I don't know how hard they're gonna come out. It didn't require any special tools. They must be stuck like a mother down in there. Doody doo, there is regular clips and O-rings on the top of these injectors. And then they look like a standard high pressure injector, which usually they don't wiggle out of the head too easily. That's why I'll be surprised if these little clips hold together. Let me go double check service data, folks. Yes, sir, I am correct. This is all they say. They say, however, if the injector sticks in the head to remove it straight. So apparently, these have a problem. Or perhaps just a tendency to stick in the head. I was hoping to be able to get up in there to give it some wedgie. Uh, I doubt these little clips that hold on the top of the injector are actually going to be strong enough to pull it up out of the head. Oh, that one is. That one's not. So one out of three ain't bad, baby. So let's go like this. There's our fuel injector, okay? I'm gonna stick this to the side, all right? You stand by. And over here on the side, all right, there's that. Those are the retainer clips. I'm glad that one of them stuck together so we can figure out everything we need to figure out here. We need to find out how to get a get a hold of this sucker. Okay, so we can get a hold of it like that. Now, we are junking these. So what's gonna be the harm of just grabbing it like this? Anybody have any objections? There's number. What's that? Four, five, six, one, two, three. Here's number one. I tell you what, before we pull on it, we probably yeah, it's gonna say make it wiggle. Oh, look at that. Come out easy peasy. 
lemon squeezy. There they are. So it appears the design of this clip, this clip that goes right here, is just spring retention once it goes into the hole and we tighten up the fuel rail, that must just put a constant downward pressure on the injector. That's the only thing I can figure just by design and by looking at it, that's what it looks like. So it's not like the ones you do on the GMs where you have to have you know a $400 pair of pliers to click the injector retainer back over it. Uh, this is pretty interesting how they do it, unless I'm seeing it wrong. But this should just wiggle out of there with the O-ring, yep, the O-ring and the backer that's on it. And the new injectors come with all new clips. And they just simply sit on there. So that's kind of neat. So down here in the head where the injectors go, it's actually nice and clean. We're not going to do any more to fiddle around down there. Uh, other than a, the little bit of lube we're going to have to use to slip them in. I'm going to take and just stick these injector connectors to the side for right now. That way when we do go to slip the rail down in there, nothing should be in our way. Hopefully. And we're going to do these three and then we'll do the other three. Uh, no real particular reason other than that's what I want to do. So let's uh, go put the new injectors on the rail. Let's see, these come with the O-rings and everything already on the injector, so we don't have to worry about going through and resizing everything uh, or replacing it or putting them together or anything. Uh, so I'll stick those three to the side. Like I say, it did come with a bag of the clips. So we'll get out three of those, or all six. Kian is who makes them. And... Uh, and then these clips, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you they go like so, like that, yeah, and they just sit on that injector, top of that injector, and then just spring loaded, baby. And I guess that's that. I don't, <clears throat> I don't really think there's much more to it than that. I will double check in service data. If we have a problem. Actually, I'll check before we have a problem. So there's that. Now, what we need to do, get out one of the ear cleaners. Boop. We need to lube them up. I believe service data said to use motor oil. We're just going to use a little dab of the silicone grease. Just because we like the people get the people in the comments all pumped up. Stating how this will destroy the catalytic converter. So we're going to wipe a little on there. Just on the outside of the O-ring. There's already the backing piece there <coughs> underneath it. And this stuff's usually pretty slippery. So go like that. Get a little bit more on this fella. Alright. <coughs> now we should be able to go like this. Wiggle it right in there until it touches. There's a little slot right there, and then there's this little donger that goes in the slot. I like that. What's up, Miss Zoe? Uh, You're not gonna come talk to us? Uh, just come work. Okay. I don't want to interrupt. We still love you. Then we'll pull these little caps off. Alright, the only things look cool. <laughs> Alright, that's it. Now we gotta go stick it back in. Oh! Forgot these things. I don't wanna forget that. Little heat protectors, I think, or something. Stick them bad boys on. Huh? So, what's up? Mm, he's doing some favor work. Let's pay our taxes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So it's super exciting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah, we made some money last year. And you're like, yeah, we don't have any more money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so kind of that feeling. Same feeling we've had for the past 15 years, parent taxes, or so. You for for your, your whole life. One of those jobs where people wait for your, your their tax return. return. Wouldn't that be great? 
I could just pay in like a whole bunch of extra. Yeah, then we'll be like, yeah, Trey, we got Yeah, it's tax time. We get money. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. It's yeah. Either way. Well, they say, Miss Elborn, free tax to death. That's mm. what they say. <laughs> I did throw a little Teflon or a little bit of lube on the Teflon seals here. So now we need to start them very gingerly and very straightly like there. Now I imagine that this is gonna have some tension on it because we need to compress those rings, am I right? So let me look up the specs on that in service data. And then what's this idiot do? He turns off the camera, pushes on it, and they click down in. So yeah, there, there's no spring tension because if you think about it, these other ones would have popped up in which they didn't. So yeah, negative there, Ghost Rider. You just need to push on it a little and they, they clicked right in. Nice and nice and neat. So we're gonna stick these bolts on there. And then these nuts. And we will find the torque spec on these to be on the safe side, safety first. All right. But for now, we'll just lightly. Just a half a ugga dugger right there. We'll come back through and torque them down. Um, we're gonna take and plug them back in. Because they won't work unless they're plugged in. True story. Make sure we got them plugged in well. This way here, we're not mixing up connectors or anything silly. There's that one and then our last one, which is over here, is kind of a little bit more of a pisser to get to. Uh, I'm gonna leave that one off till we get the other fuel rail off because I need to straighten up that rubber. So, plan C, we'll leave that one unplugged. I can't see these ones, but we'll just do the poke and hope. Nope, 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 gotta keep hoping. Oh, wait a minute, is there a little clicker on the bottom? Oh yeah, the clicker's on the bottom on these ones. Maybe it was on the bottom of the other ones too. So there's that, those, are, those three are unplugged now. Easy, easy, easy. And then now we'll see if we can't wiggle these ones out straight, get the whole things to come out. If not, we know what we're doing. And we have to take the fuel rail pressure sensor off. Also, once we get this one up. Come on, baby. How many of them came out? One, two, three, none of them. So all three of those injectors stayed in the head. Not a big deal. It just says push. Push what, Honda? I can't freaking see anything because you got this big cover over it. Oh, Honda, you're a pain in my head. Anywho, push these out of the way. All right. Hopefully these injectors are nice and wiggly. I don't know what you do if they season the head. I, 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 I suppose we figured out. So that one's wiggly. That one's wiggly. And that one's wiggly. Now we're just gonna grab them like a caveman. Slip it up and out. There's one. There's two. And there's three. So nice and easy. One, two, and three, or three, four, and five to be more specific, or four, five, and six if you want to be really specific. And basically the same routine. I'm going to swap the stuff over, boom, lube them in the hole. Realistically, there's no real reason, I don't think, to take this rail off all the way, is there? And can't we just put it back together like it is? I don't know. I kind of feel guilty if I don't take it off all the way. I pissed around with that connector for a little bit. Enough to know that I'm just going to quit while I'm ahead. And we're just going to do it like this because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. We're not dealing with any sort of contamination issue. So we'll stick them right in the rail without even... I tried to peel the rubber back, but I don't want to... I don't want to cause a problem, you know what I'm saying? So let's get our rubbers. We'll lube the ends and then boop. 
you know, because that's the sound injectors make. Boop! <laughs> At least where I'm from. So I just stick them on there lately. All right. Whoops, pull that right back out of the hole. Stick that, pull this up here. Line them up. We'll take our plastic caps off. All right, we're gonna stick them to the side. Move up our Teflon seals here. I did look down in there with a the mirror. Everything is nice and clean, just like the other side was. So that's a plus. Everything looks good. We want to make sure we're lined up in our hole with our clip. This one is not. Oh yeah, I guess it is. It was just a reflection. They're all they're all lined up. Never mind. Move our wires back out of the way so they're not hindering us. Stop being a hindrance. There. Now this one we're going in blind, fellas. Here, lined up on those studs. All right, we gotta be in the hole because otherwise we wouldn't be down this far. And then we push, 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 and then down it goes. It's in all the way. That was easy. So I'll stick all the bolts and nuts back on this. Piece of cake, huh? Show's over at this point. I just want to find something to plug the hole here in the end of this fuel rail. This fuel rail I cleaned off the threaded portion when I had it out. This one, however, we have to do right here, but I don't want to get any of the schmoo in the injector or in the fuel rail, so I plugged it with a little rubber cone and then we'll, we'll get some stuff here. Yeah, very gently. So I do this before I forget. I don't know if it's quite necessary, but it makes me feel good. Knowing that those threads are good and clean when we put the rail back on there, the tube, transfer tube. So I plugged all those fellas in and everything has been torqued 100% uh, to factory specs now. Uh, I did clean off our fuel rail here and then blew it out with uh, some compressed air, but when I cleaned it, I let gravity do the work because it's the law. And then this is gonna go probably something like so. And then that wire ran through the middle here like that, if I remember correctly. And we'll get these nuts started. We'll get all three of them started. That one, and then we got the one up here on the high pressure rail itself. Get it started. Well, everything kind of wiggled together here. It's pretty rigid, so you can only kind of fit her in there one way. There's that. Let me get this clamp. Where does that need to be? I want to get that twirled around there where that needs to be. Then we'll get this one started. I was wrong. Service data on the install procedure does tell you to replace the joint pipe. So I went and got a new one and put that on there uh, to make sure we're covered there. And then plug the high pressure fuel pump back in. So now that I have that situated, thankfully I had a new one sitting here, we're going to finish putting it together. I'm going to take and clean off the junk where the intake goes on, get them gaskets back on there, and we'll get the intake set back on here. Probably, oh, this stud, this stud here was pretty loose. You guys see that? Good thing I checked it. So we'll have to get our other stud. I was just gonna say we should get our other stud and make sure that's tightened in. That one's loose. That one's tight. So we need to tighten up these other studs. So let's, uh, let me get that real quick. Stand by. I'm back. So that nut was only finger tight on the one that the whole stud came out. So I just spun that off. 
no big deal there. We've got us a stud installer for the eight millimeter size. Maybe these are 10 millimeter. I think they're eight. So we're gonna snug them up and we'll get the we'll get the torque specs and torque them to factory specs. But for now we're just gonna snug them. Alright, so that's good. Uh, 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 nice word whisker and pal. I've got our intake here. I clean that off in our New York compliant eco-friendly parts washer, which loosely translates to costs a lot of money and doesn't work worth it. And I was just testing you. Okay, wanted to make sure that fit and it does. Now prior to putting that on, you do have some other jiggly bits you need to put on. So we'll slip that down in. That just sits on there like so. The 10 mil, ask yourself, did uh, everything else underneath there get torqued to spec prior to putting that on? Hopefully, the answer is yes. In our case, I believe it is. We'll very lightly tighten that, come back and torque it. And then here where it says two fuel pump, we will click that back over our rail. Okay, now we've all passed our test. Then we will stick this on the lower intake manifold. And then we will get the nuts and bolts that go in it. Not gonna bore you with that process, but rest assured, this will get snugged down very gingerly and then torqued to factory spec, as always. I think we're safe at this point click this little guy back on and then perhaps you can see where these retainers are on the back side here I gotta come on the front side and line up the front ones the front ones are lined up and then the back ones are lined up so maybe from the top you can get in there I, I don't know I figure we could put it on because we can push the manifold down past it but just wanted to show you that folks anyway make sure you clean up the back side of your throttle body before you stick this down on here It'll just be easier, you know what I mean, without this thing in the way. And then we gotta look for the stud. Where is he? Ah, uh, I was hoping I could see it so I could just line it up first try. And there's that one. There's that one. Make sure your O-rings are on there. And also there's a gasket for the EGR, make sure that's on there prior to putting that on. in a crisscross pattern. Crisscross, who remembers that band? They're wicked, 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 wet. <laughs> you remember crisscross? Who wore their pants to school back? Not this guy. But I do remember guys that did. Mm -hmm. Put that in there. We'll hook that up. Obviously we already torqued on the manifold. There's that one, and we don't want to forget our booster. We'll go from rich to lean, real lean, and no power assist on the brakes. We'll get all the stuff around the front side when we get over there. We're gonna take, hook up our EGR tube. Big twin tube job here. Does it go that way? Negative. I was testing, and all failed. Got me. Now those just go into plastic, so use your mind, not your muscle, or your torque wrench, <laughs> whichever you prefer. Just don't get stupid. All right, that's that. Let's hook up the throttle body, the rest of the jiggly bits over here, and we're done. See, it's finally done, survey says. Pass, 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 pass. We did good. I mean, real good. 
And we have a steady increase in the fuel pressure, key on engine off, so we've started at the 600 mark-ish, 620 or so in, in a very short period of time. We're building up pressure very quickly, so that's good, it means we have no leaks. Take her for a two uh, monitor fuel trims. I want everything kind of steady out here. And I can see we're running about 5%, let me see here, about 5% long-term average, uh, which is way better than the minus 17 to 18 we were running. So it goes through a lot of different fueling strategies. So it's not uncommon to watch your short terms kind of be all over the place for a little while. Um, some of these partially zero emissions vehicles will do some pretty wild things with their fuel trims where you think the car is broke, but it's not. Hold over here for a moment. Opened up generic OBD2 data because sometimes it's easier if that's what you're used to looking at as far as percentage of correction on fuel trim. And we can see uh, it's all warmed up. Well, you can't see it's all warmed up because you don't even know how warm it is. Uh, 185 so we've been driving for a little while and then um, there we go so now we can see you know fully warmed up that our fuel trims are spot on everybody should be happy at this point and there you have it, folks uh, putting the six pack of injectors in your Honda 3.5 Earth Dreams direct injection engine uh, not too difficult of a job and actually relatively inexpensive for what it could be in comparison to some other makes. We won't mention names because people get sensitive. And that's it. You can see the fuel trims are running great. It passed its air fuel ratio cylinder test, uh, which it failed the first time. So that's good. And I, I think that's all we need to do. All I know that you need to do is go into that comment section, the NC, the Facebook. And uh, whatever else you do when you're down here, questions, give me some of them. And uh, I'll answer them, try to, or some other folks here on the YouTube. Uh, they like to go down there and answer stuff, which is great and helpful. A lot of smart guys out there. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.